Brill and the Dragators by Peggy Downing. Chapter 12 Underwater Surprise. Brill felt the sharp teeth, but they weren't clamped together enough to cause pain. The Dragator dragged him under the cold water. Down, down, down they went until Brill's lungs felt as if they would burst. Instinctively, he took a breath, but water rushed in, stinging his nostrils, choking him. The blackness of unconsciousness blotted out his terror. Later, he heard voices. I saw his eyes flicker. He's coming, too. Did you get all the water from his lungs? I did my best. Brill opened his eyes to see two men looking at him. The rock walls of the dark cave surrounded him. One man held a candle. Segra! Brill gasped. Where's, where's Segra? The man pointed to Segra, who knelt on the four-foot ledge and patted his scaly dragator in the water. Look, Brill, it's Peachy. He brought me here. Brill breathed deeply, hoping the air might help his aching head. Good job, Peachy, he called. The taller man said, Better wave to Chanto. He's the one who carried you. He always wants to know his charges are all right. Brill waved to the large dragator by Peachy. Thanks, Chanto. He looked up at the tall men. Don't dragators eat people after all? No, they like people, all except the emperor and the people who force them to live in the moat. Let's move inside, suggested the shorter man. Where am I? Brill asked. You'll hear the whole story in time. You need to get these wet clothes off. Come on. Segra bent and kissed Peachy's scaly head. I wish I had a basket of peaches for you. Uh, feel strong enough to walk? The short man asked Brill. Yes, but as Brill stood, a wave of dizziness washed over him. The taller man grabbed his arm. Slowly, they walked through the narrow passage, which ended in a small room where a rope ladder led upward. Can you climb the ladder? asked the man. I'm okay. The dizziness was almost gone, and Brill was anxious to see what was at the top of the ladder. He climbed behind Segra, listening to the rumble of voices above him. He looked around as his head came to the level of the floor. A crowd of people milled about in a large cavern. His father took his hand and helped him up. Brill, are you all right? I'm fine. Brill stepped into the room and his father threw his arms around him for a quick hug. It's so good to see you again. We won't be able to open the door, but we fix the bar so it will fall off when you push on the door, explained Brill. Thanks, son. I'm sure we'll manage. Did Grandfather get rescued, too? asked Brill, hopefully. Father put his arm around Brill's shoulder. I'm afraid the fall from the drawbridge was too much for some of the older people, Brill. Brill swallowed hard. You mean Grandfather? His bones were brittle and many of them broke. He lived a few days, but then he slipped away to be with the Lord. The ache that Brill felt on the day of Grandfather's execution returned. His eyes clouded with tears so he didn't notice King Talder until he said, I'm sorry about your grandfather, Brill. Before he died, he told me, God is calling me home, but you still have work to do. He was a brave, good man. Brill smiled through his tears. Peachy hadn't drowned the king after all. If all went well, Talder would rule Exitorn again. Father took Brill's hand. Come into my room and put on some dry clothes. Father led the way to a small cave off the main cavern. He handed Brill a large tunic. It'll be too big, but it's dry, and you can wear it while your clothes are drying by the fire. You can throw out my silk tunic. I'll be glad to wear my homespuns again. You will want to come home with me then? Oh, yes, father. Do you have time to explain how you all got here? His father sat on a flat stone. First of all, dragators are intelligent beings. They can't speak to us, but we're amazed at the things they understand. They long to escape from the moat and get back to the rivers where they're free. They know their best hope is to overturn the emperor, so every time the emperor threw someone to them, they rushed him to the natural caves under Palatial Island. Brill sat beside his father. How do you get food down here? 
There's a tunnel which leads outside the city. We have friends there who help us by sending food. Enough for the Dragators, too. It's amazing that the Emperor never realized the Dragators weren't eating the people he threw to them. Not when you understand that a main has no true friends. Even those with important jobs live in fear that a main will someday have them thrown to the Dragators. If they know the Dragators aren't killing their victims, they don't want a main to change his execution style. Father stood up. Come, let's join the others. As they came to the main cavern, they joined King Talder, who was talking to Segra. The king said, I want to thank you both for all you did for me. Brill smiled. I can hardly believe that most of the people thrown to the Dragators are still alive. It was a terrible experience, added King Talder. I'm very glad I didn't have to be thrown into the moat. My brittle bones might have snapped. The king arrived at an important time, said Father. He showed the men where to dig to reach the door to the castle. When I was a child, I sometimes played in these caverns, explained King Talder. But my father thought they were too dangerous, so he had the tunnel leading to the caves filled in. The king moved on to talk to others, while Brill and Segra shared their surprising experiences when they were thrown into the moat. Later, the king signaled for silence. Though his skin was wrinkled and his hair gray, his eyes glowed with determination. The time is close, he said in a deep, commanding voice. Tomorrow night we will enter the palace, capture the royal family, and I will return to my throne. The emperor and his family will be exiled. We hope to avoid bloodshed. The crowd cheered, and he held his arms out to them in a symbolic gesture of love. Freedom will be returned to the enslaved people of the empire. He turned to Brill's father. What are the latest reports from the city? The rebels there are ready. Most of the people will be glad to swear their allegiance to you. The king smiled. God has led us this far, and I know he will continue to lead. We have reconstructed many parts of the holy book for the memories of all of you, and it will again be our guide. Love for God and for one another will replace the forced allegiance to a selfish emperor who governs with fear. The crowd cheered. Sagra whispered to Brill, As soon as King Talder is back on the throne, I will go to my parents in my mountain. Brill nodded. And I will go back to the farm. Sagra called. What about the Dragators who made this all possible? They will all be transported back to the rivers from where they came, promised King Talder. They too will be free. The moat will again be used for canoeing on warm afternoons. God's hand turns darkness into light, sorrow into joy, and hopeless circumstances into great victories. I pray that he will help me find my long-lost son, so there will be an heir to the throne. Brill squeezed his father's hand. Now that I've seen what God can do, I won't be so afraid. On the day of the revolution, the caverns filled with city people who were anxious to overthrow the emperor. Brill saw Newfell, the soldier who had brought him to Palatial Island. Brill whispered to him, Are soldiers rebelling too? Most of them. A few are waiting to make sure which side wins, but there's no doubt about the outcome. Not many men are still loyal to a main. Father asked Brill, Where do the members of the royal family sleep? I have a floor plan of the castle which King Talder drew. Brill pointed out the royal bedrooms. He also showed where soldiers were stationed. You have given us valuable information, said his father, who was organizing the men into squadrons to take various parts of the castle. Brill was assigned to the men who were to arrest Prince Grosdare and his servants. At midnight, the men began moving up the tunnel toward the palace dungeon. The bar fell off the door in the cell, where Brill and Segra had been imprisoned. The door leading to the hall was not locked, for the dungeon was empty. The men streamed into the corridor and marched up the stone stairs. Brill was behind the lead soldier, and his heart pounded as he heard a man shout, Throw down your arms and welcome King Talder back! Ah! A scream sent a chill through Brill. Had the soldier been killed? He could hear the crash of swords. Send for more soldiers. We can't hold them. 
I'm not fighting for the emperor. Here's my sword. What's happening? Brill asked a tall man. Our men have overcome the guards. Come on, let's go. As they passed, Brill saw one of the rebels lying wounded. Another man was bandaging his arm. But the guards had surrendered their swords. One called, Good luck to you. As planned, Brill led his troop to Prince Groster's room. He saw a few palace soldiers, but none were fighting. As he stepped into the familiar room, he called, Prince Groster, wake up! You're being sent into exile. The prince uttered a strangled cry, A ghost! Help! Maopar, help me! But Maopar and the other servants had already been captured. The invaders were tying their wrists together. My father will have you all thrown to the dragators, screamed Grostair. The rebels paid no attention. Brill helped Grostair dress as he muttered curses and threats. The men propelled him to the throne room where Emain, King Lyra, and Florette were assembled to meet King Talder. Emain spluttered, You'll pay for this, Talder. I'll chop off your head. You, you and all your rebels, I have hundreds of soldiers outside who are loyal to me. A man stepped forward to report, Your soldiers killed the men who swam across the moat to lower the drawbridge. The rebels who control the city have not yet been able to reach Palatial Island. Good, good, there's still hope, cried Emain. I'm afraid not, your majesty. In the struggle with the rebels, one of the chains broke, so the bridge was hanging partly in the water. The dragators climbed up it and onto the land. Swords can't penetrate their tough hides, and they've chased your soldiers to the roof of a storage shed. Emain shuddered. Dragators loose on the land. They, they must be pushed back to the moat. Nobody's safe with them running around. Emain, you no longer rule Exitorn, said King Talder. We do not fear the dragators. They saved us from your sentence of death. Emain pounded his fists against his forehead. How could I have been so fooled by the dragators? They ruined my kingdom. No, Amain, your own selfishness defeated you. What will happen to us? asked the queen, dabbing her eyes with her lace handkerchief. You and your family will be taken to the island of Pover, answered Talder. Your servants have their choice of whether to go with you or remain here. Most of them say they prefer to stay here. But how can I get along without servants? demanded Emain. I expect you'll lose some of the fat you've accumulated. You'll have to work for your food. I'm sending a supply of seed and farm tools with you. I'm no farmer, said Emain in a choked voice. Pover has a good climate for farming, said King Talder. Will cacao beans grow there? asked Grostair. I don't know, answered King Talder. I can't live without chocolate, cried Grostair. We'll have a lot worse problems than worrying about chocolate, snapped Emain. Segra put her arms around Florette. I wish you could come with me, Segra said. I wish so too, but Mother needs me. Someday we'll meet again. You'll always be my friend, whispered Segra. I'm so glad you didn't die, Florette said and smiled. At least I won't have to marry Prince Oplak. Father put his arm around Brill's shoulders. Come, son, let's go home. I've borrowed a cart, Brill asked. Father, can Segra come with us? After we've seen Mother, we must help her find her family. Of course, Brill. We won't forget all that Segra's done. Brill felt a surge of excitement. I can't wait to get home. Mother will be so surprised and happy to see us. End of chapter 12. End of Brill and the Dragators.